Hey, Kevin from JJ Ad Sensor. This is the oldest, uh, biggest, best, I'm not gonna say the most famous, but uh, definitely one of them. Maybe the most famous in, uh, in America. Um, we're uh, a very big hat shop and very authentic. Uh, we have the good stuff here. Uh, and what makes our stuff a little different, um, first of all, our employees have been here, a lot of them 20, 25, 30 years. Um, I'm here, excuse me, I'm out of breath. I just opened the shop like 10 minutes, 10 seconds ago, actually. Just put on the camera. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm here about 25 years almost, 24 and change. Uh, the owner is here way longer than me. She's uh, in the business maybe another five years in this shop at least another five years you know in the business and uh wow and there's a couple of employees that are uh there's rod who's here five years uh more than me um jose is here uh, almost as old as so he's here almost as old, i think 19 years or so everybody here is we're, we're here a long time and we know our stuff and you're different guys here. You've got like, you know, me, I'm like that kind of young rock guy or whatever, you know. I'm actually not that young though. Um, it's just the hat, so keep me young. But anyway, you know, people gravitate towards me when they want something like funky or if they just see my hat and it looks cool. Maybe they don't want like a businessman's hat or something, you know. They say, oh, this guy's wearing something interesting. Let me ask him, he seems to know his stuff, you know. But then there's the guy with the 1920s, uh, vintage you know, two-tone shoes on and suspenders and bow tie we've got that guy um I don't know, like the vintage vintage guy uh actually we've got a couple of them two different types of vintage guys here we've got um the gq guys the ones that are just like you know really cool and they just dress with nice suits we've got the sort of slightly hip-hop gq guys who kind of throw in a little bit more of a modern edginess. I'm gonna say the younger guys, you know, really they have a little bit of the hip hop influence or, you know, slightly urban vibe. And uh, the older guys like me, you know, we're just too square for that, I guess, you know, we have other influences, I guess. But everybody here has their, you know, their part. And, uh, you know, when a man comes in, he's got different guys that know their stuff. You know, there's a guy here who knows his vintage hats. And I don't know all that much about vintage hats. I know my hats, you know. I'm here for a long time. But, you know, vintage is not my specialty. We've got him. We've got a Western guy. We've got, you know, everybody. And um, another thing I think that makes us very special, JJ Hat Center does a lot of custom work. Um, for instance, you know, like this, the Stetson Whippet you might see everywhere. But we might tell Stetson, we want to do some special colors, you know, like, you know, how about if we do cognac with a, with a green bound edge, you know? Or how about, you know, let's try some, I don't know, something different. Uh, can you make it for us in white, you know? Well, since it's close to white as we can get, uh, great. How about if we make the binding gray and this black? Cool, they'll make it up for us. So if you order enough stuff, um, companies that are not really custom will make custom versions of hats for us. Um, I don't know, another example like this set I believe when this hat came out, it might have come out uh, free shaped, not open crown like this, in one color. I could be wrong, or something like that. So, you know, we ordered it in three colors, open crown, you know, extra wide binding on it. It's like a really uh, vintage, you know, high crown. Humphrey Bogart kind of thing. So, there's stuff here that is way more authentic because it's not just the guys at the head of Stetson or Bailey or Borsalino or Dodge or Knox or Kubro. These, these hat companies, not those guys who are designing our stuff always. I'd say more, more times, maybe like eight times out of ten, we're doing our stuff custom here. Now, there are certain hats that are classics, like the Grey Whippet, uh, Stetson Temple, you know, it comes in these classic colors. You know? But then there are other things that we actually design um, from the ground up. We uh, say, okay, well, look, this was a very famous hat. It was selling for $400, $300, $200, whatever. 
and it's out of print now. Nobody can get it. So we want to uh, we want to kind of redo that hat, but we want it to be some change. So this hat right here, let's say, here's a custom hat. This hat doesn't really exist. If anybody else wants to order it, um, it's a hat called the Valencia that we created um, for a very long time. There's a model called the Como that we just can't get anymore. And uh, we were just selling hundreds and hundreds of Comos. It's an Italian fedora that just sold like crazy, like $350, it was expensive. And they became unavailable now um, in the US and New York. So we created some custom hats, a little bit in that shape. One complaint is that the Como is a little high in the crown for some people, so we lowered the crown to a more sort of a normal this is a classical height, we call this. Kind of a, just a little bit more standard height, not extra high. A lot of people like extra high because you can always just lower it. But this is a nice low crown. Um, it's got the raw edge with a whip stitch. The whip stitch is like a little stitching on the edge there. It makes the edge of the brim look really sharp, very thin and sharp. The Como had that on it. Um, did that. We made it a little bit snappier in the brim. No more snap. We kept it really soft, almost unstiffened in the crown. Um, super soft leather, like really buttery, light soft leather. And we said, let's make this in three qualities. This is 100% beaver, this one. It's actually, it's like 98 or 95% beaver with a touch of mink. It's, Touch of mink is like an old classic thing. A lot of people would put a touch of mink in beaver hats. It gives it a bit of a shine. It's a sort of like an oiliness to mink, which also repels water. It gives it a shine and kind of a, I don't know how you describe it, almost an oily feeling that makes water sort of like, it's very subtle, it doesn't feel wet. It's almost like, um, like those tissues with lotion. It's like, it's kind of slightly more slippery, but it's not really wet, it's like that. So it's, it's kind of like a very mo not moist, what's the word? Undry or something? It feels very soft. It's just a beautiful, beautiful felt. Um, touch of mink, and we call this beaver. So it's basically all beaver. Um, so, you know, that's a crazy upgrade. And then, you know, we made it in this color cognac, which like nobody has. We have a like, kind of a white color in it too, an off-white bone, and then like another seven, eight colors. Uh, we do the same hat in a shorter brim. We do it in a three inch brim called the San Sebastian. Um, we have a smaller brim called the Cordoba and they're all basically versions of this custom hat. And we control the quality. We have a $275 version, a $300 version. And for people who want the old beaver, you know, this over $500 version. But uh, the point is that custom hats, hats that are designed by people who are in the business, people who see what's hot and what's, what's requested, what the kids want, what the young men want, what the young girls want. We see that and we're in touch with, with what people want. And sometimes we set trends here, you know, it happens also. But we res we're very responsive to that and we'll come out with the hats um, that are um, appropriate to meet these needs. For instance, um, flat brims became very, very trendy uh, and big brims. So here's a flat hat. Now these are just starting to hit mainstream now. You're seeing them on like Amazon, you know, like cheap Chinese ones, really crappy ones and stuff, but this is a great quality one, you know. This is like a real Stetson. It's rabbit and beaver, it's rainproof. It's got a really interesting band, the bow on it. This was a, designed by a young lady over at Stetson. She made this one also in black with an olive trim, which uh, I got myself this year. That was my, my new hat. And uh, let's see the hat, I have to get it for you. But anyway, this is called the Tri-City. This is like a brand, brand new hat. I don't even think it's on the internet anywhere or anything. Um, Customers told me, oh, I didn't even see it on the uh, internet. It's not even on sets inside or anything. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. But um, it's on our site, and we had it first. Um, you know, we, we wanted it. We needed it. We got it quickly. 
um, because people were asking for flat brims. And what we were doing was making them custom. They were like, you know, four or five hundred dollars a pop, and they were really good, good custom hat like this to perfect spec. And like a two, three week wait at least. So, you know, people don't always want to do that. So we brought the price down by having a, a good company make a hat that we needed. Just so happened that the girl at Stetson um, created this. We didn't really come up with this idea. But um, we work very, very closely with people at uh, the hat companies, and um, we work together. A lot of times, um, you'll see things here that just don't really exist anywhere else because of that, uh, that reason. Not only do we create the styles, we have the means to make them turn into real hats quickly. You, know, you don't have to say, well, it'll be here next year. Um, you know, sometimes we could just get something that pretty quickly, you know. Things could be custom ordered, could be custom made. Um, let's get back to custom hats now. Now, um, there, there are different types of custom. There's custom, like I said, where we create the specs, like this Valencia. This is a hat that's JJ Hat Center line. So it's basically custom, but we ordered, you know, a few dozen of these to last this fall winter season. Then there's full, full custom where you come in and you say, okay guys, I want to make that Valencia, but I want it in purple. I want it fuzzy. I want it furry. I want it purple, furry. I want rhinestones around it so it looks like diamonds. I want three rows of rhinestones so it looks like the whole thing is iced out. Um, and I also want the edge to be lime green ribbon, really bright like fluorescent. And when you turn out the lights, I want it to glow in the dark and say my name on the side in invisible ink. I also want this fuzzy hat to have no leather on the inside. I want it to have just a ribbon uh, so it could be soft enough for me to fold up and stick in my pocket. And I want the brim to be this big. You know, you could do things like that. Now, if your request is pretty I don't know, uh, normal, what's the word? If it's a standard request, let's say you wanted this hat, but you wanted it in brown. We're going to have it, you know, we're going to have black, brown, gray, cognac, navy, charcoal, you know, things like that. But, um, you know, colors, colors are weird in the hat industry. You would think there's a lot more colors, but the basic hat, like let's say this model from Dobbs or Stetson or, or, or whoever, um, they're going to usually come in colors like gray, brown, and black, those three. Um, sometimes, if you're lucky, there'll be some alternate colors like beige or navy blue. Um, navy is more rare. Than, you'd think it's popular. It's not. Beige is harder to find, but you find them. Navy blue, kind of super light grays that are almost white. Very, very white is almost impossible. It's like almost white. These, again, are custom colors. You don't see them. Um, sage green, that's a good, like, secondary color. Charcoal gray, okay, you'd think that'd be super popular, like the charcoal gray businessman. No, gray, black, and brown are the three standards. Sometimes a hat comes in only those three. It's gonna come in four colors. They're gonna add tan, maybe navy, maybe charcoal, maybe sage, one of those four, but not all. You know, if it comes in five colors, you that's what I'm saying. So if you ask for a color like cognac, uh, white, I don't know, uh, burgundy, you think it's a really like a, not a, a hard thing to get, like a green hat like this or royal blue or burgundy. It's hard. Men's hats companies don't make these things. Um, there are like, I don't know, a couple of them. There are a few. There's one in the Czech Republic that makes some wild colors. But then the companies make them, but people like us don't stock them. It's up to us to order like two dozen of those yellow hats you want so that we can order enough to, you know, to get them in here. A lot of times if you want to order one bright yellow hat, there, there's no way to do it. Or there is a special order fee, you know, they charge you an extra 25 bucks or something like that. But most companies, they're not good on it. Um, that's where the custom thing comes in. Colors are, are tough. Um, there are ways to 
modify a hat, we can take the binding here, this little ribbon, we can change that to let's say sky blue and white tie dye. Um, maybe over here, like another cloudy light blue and white tie dye. And then that hat is totally like blue and white swirl here, blue and white swirl there, custom down. That's a, a cheaper way to get some color in your hat. Now maybe that's too much color for some people. Uh, other people might want uh, just a, a bright blue feather in there. So you could wear this hat with like a navy blue suit and stick like a peacock blue feather in there. That's enough color. Hey, one of my amazing employees just came in. No, not employees, co-workers, sorry. We're all employees. Now, um, let's get back to color. If you want to modify a hat, it's not that hard. You can buy a hat off the wall that costs $100. Maybe we have it on sale at clearance in the back room for half price, 50 bucks, 55 bucks. You could go to our workshop and say, hey, can you put some really crazy binding on the edge? I want purple and brown leopardy tie-dyed swirl binding. Or, you know, whatever. I want uh, neon green binding there, neon purple ribbon here, and I want the bow to be orange. It's not that expensive. It's actually pretty cheap. Um, we tie-dye our own bands here. We have like a method, uh, they're called Van Bands. Our, um, our hat maker Van Wen has a special secret method of sort of tie-dyeing bands. And they get a almost a cloudy look. It kind of bleaches them out or colors them. So if you want swirls, you can do the swirls. Um, if you just want to change, you know, like this hat, I could put purple here and purple here. It would give it a totally different look. Or bright yellow and bright yellow. Um, there are a lot of ways to add color. I'm gonna say most people just want like a little feather. That's enough color. You change the band, it's gonna become something very funky, like a, you know, blue or red band or something. It's like for showbiz or performers. Um, or, you know, you just want something that attracts a little attention. That's cool, like, where did you get that? You know? But generally, just like a, a colored feather, some bright red, peacock blue, that would be enough. If I had a blue suit on, like navy, this would be amazing with just a touch of like bright blue there, you know? I would think that a whole band would be too much and a whole colored hat, too much for some people. Now look, you know, I'm the guy who works at the hat shop, so I could wear this bright, you know, green. It's like, I'm almost expected to wear something a little funky or something different, you know? But it's not that easy to walk around at everybody's job um, wearing a lime green hat. I can understand, you know, if you work for IBM and everybody's in charcoal gray and navy blue, you know, this is not gonna fly. So, what I'm getting at, I guess, is um, talking about color. Color, I think, is something that you have to do it tastefully. Um, you can overdo it. I think a lot of people are tempted to modify hats when they first come in. The first thing they want to do is put a lot of feathers in, change the bands. Um, it was something I used to do when I was young. I did a lot of changing to all my hats and I would reshape the crown five, ten different ways and it would show it um, and the hat would just never look new. So I stopped doing it and now I, I keep my hats basically stock. Um, the only thing I do is sometimes I ventilate the crown. I put those little, uh, you see the ventilation in there? Little dots. And other times I take the linings out because they're just cooler that way. Linings do just come right out. Sometimes they put a little dab of hot glue in there to keep it from moving around. But don't worry, just pull it out. If it's an old, old, old vintage hat, it could be sewn in. Eh, same thing, you pull it carefully, maybe cut the strings with the, the threads with the razor, but a vintage hat, I don't think you want to do that. You know, these, these linings are 10 bucks. Um, everybody has them. Well, we have them. And the idea is that, you know, you, will, you get them messy, they get sweat on, dirty hair oils, it's hair sprays and stuff. And then when this gets like all yellowy and disgusting, you just throw it out and you get a new one. And the hat stays clean, the hat moves on. Now, if you're bald, or just bald over here, you're gonna leave like a sweat stain on the top of your head. So you don't wanna make stains that show through, like a pit stain kind of thing. 
it's just not attractive. So leave your leave your lining in. If you have a lot of hair, you know, bushy hair like me or something, it's probably going to get in the way in between your scalp and the hat, so you're not going to get any sweat stains. It's less of an issue. You can take it out. Um, I'm going to say, yeah, there's no reason to. I do it because I get hot in these hats. I will work in them 9 to 5, and it gets hot in here, so that's why I take mine out. But, um, yeah, think before you modify your hats and stuff. Um, you can always do it, but take your time. Maybe go on the internet and look at color combinations. Like go to some hat designers, like trendy hat designers, and just flip through their, their pages of their old hats. And you see, oh, this guy's got like a purplish blue with a kind of a coral orange trim. Wow, that's a great color combination. Oh, look at this, this guy's got a black hat with like a black band with a little pinstripe of red on it. Oh, or this guy has, you know, like a, a light yellow hat with black and whatever, cornflower stripes. That you find these cool color combinations you would never think, of, you know, to do and, and ideas. So don't rush it. And um, remember, these hats stay with you for a long time, sometimes decades, sometimes uh, lifetimes, generations. Um, all the time we get people's grandfather's hats, hats from the 20s, 30s, 40s, all the time. They do really stick around for a long time. So um, make your choice count. Choose wisely. Choose something that you're going to love and that's not going to hang in the closet. You make sure it's not too wild. Don't let somebody like uh, convince you to get something. Oh, it looks so great. It looks so young in it. Oh, you got it. But you feel weird about it. Don't do it. And it's like 200 bucks or, or something you know, for a hat that's going to lay in your closet. Take your time. Um, take as much time as you need shopping. Ask questions. Try lots of stuff, different brands, dark, light. Mess around with them. Make sure you're happy with it. Then buy lots and lots and lots of hats. Bye-bye. Kevin from JJ Hat Center.